for my mother, my first fan. Thank you for making me a man. Wow, this is amazing. Finally, we're getting to draw the next subject from the puzzle series. If you've been following me on Instagram, you must have known what the puzzle series is all about. So, right now, we're drawing Born a Crime. This piece is titled Born a Crime. And here are some sketches that I have to come up with before actually realizing the work itself. So, it gives me a proper idea of where I'm headed. I shared the work on Twitter and shout outs to all my people on Twitter that reacted to this. The sketch and the finished drawing, as you can see. What is Born a Crime? Why Born a Crime? The edition is particularly inspired after reading the book Born a Crime, Stories from a South African Childhood by Trevor Noah. Now, this work is particularly a letter of hope and love to all individuals, as evident in the subject's life. The facial puzzles represented here are intentionally weaved together to form a moving portrait of a man who made his way against all odds. That sounds like big grammar. I know, yeah, I know. So just scrap that. I'm literally going to show you what I mean. If you're going to see that, you're gonna have to stay till the end of the video so I can show you how we did that. Back to the drawing. We're having the scribbling method. This is the charcoal mediums that I'm using. These are the rather hard compressed charcoals. So I go in circles, I go in round circles to get the air texture. Because if you observe the afro hair that Trevor has on, it's very thick as you can see. It's, it's the natural afro hair typical for black men. If we observe all these various segments in the portrait, about one, two, three, four, five, and six. About six different areas that has been broken down. For the label number five, they are more receded to the background and that's why they are darker. The intention is to create an illusion of depth, right? So we're drawing on a flat 2D surface. But this time around, for us to properly distinguish between the light and the dark places, we are going to play a lot with shades. So you can see the shadows right on the first layer to the, to the fourth layer. You can see the shadows. There is this depth that has been placed directly on the surface. That is very, very deliberate, as you can see. This time around, we're shading the eyes. So the eyes, as we have it here, is one of the most important part of this piece, actually. Because I believe the eyes are windows to the soul. I believe the eyes are very, very important part of how we actually even interact with one another. You know, it's very visceral, it's very raw. And uh, for you to really understand how to shade the eyes, I think you need to really do a lot of study, a lot of actual research on the components of the eyeballs, in particular the eyelid, the eyelashes, the eyebrows. Because if you're able to just oppose all these various elements along with the texture, but the texture come last. The textures is like the icing on the cake, right? So if you're able to distinguish the light and the dark around the eyes, the reflection in the eyeballs, the iris, as you can see, then you're able to convince the viewer what exactly it is that you're showing them and i intend for this to be very realistic as possible that's my style that's what i do so most of my works are very detailed 
and this is no different from any of them so interestingly uh we have the brushes we use the brush to shade them you can see the lower eyelash the upper eyelash there's a curve there and i'm doing my possible best to make sure that i blend them very well so i have the brush this time around to go on the lower side of the eyes so there is usually a grinded charcoal that is on the sandpaper and then i apply it to the surface of the drawing it might not look like much but if you really take the time to observe closely you can see how the technique works so i use this as an undertone before i actually even start doing any other thing now i'm taking the pencils this is the graphite pencil the hb very light grade pencil and i also use this to further extend the layers this is the first layer around the cheek bone so so now i'm using the brush again as you can see the brushes are going over the, the graphite pencils so i take the graphite again to for that define the details so when it comes to the details right you cannot really use charcoals for some certain kinds of detail you see those graphites are the things that will allow for you to actually penetrate deep inside the skin textures that you're aiming to get so for me it works pretty fine i use the charcoal to to get the undertone and then i use the graphite to kind of like structure out the lines the details on the face and then i use the brush and the charcoals to blend them back
Okay, so I'm just going to be very honest with you. This is my worst nightmare. This is the most difficult part of this drawing. I haven't seen it done before. I also haven't done it before. But I thought the idea of adding colors would actually make it pop because I think it looks cool and it will be a very, very good fit. So I decided to put my watercolor to use. I haven't used it in over a year. I wasn't really liking the texture of the watercolor. So I switched to the colored pencils and the colored pencils did the job for me. So that was how I'm able to get the colors to it. And this is the final result and I'm so excited. I showed a video earlier on where every individual part of the piece was animated. This is the interesting thing about augmented reality. I hope to explore more on this idea as the project develops, which is why I'm equally minting this work on the blockchain. It's available now on Foundation. So if you think you like what you see, you can as well go cop the NFT on Foundation. All right, so that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Take the time to subscribe. Thank you very much. Cheers.